It's been getting pretty cold here lately. It's about 26 degrees this morning. And uh, it's not too much fun working in the barn when it's that cold. I need to get some doors on it so I can heat the place. Uh, I think I have a design figured out that I want to do. So let's, uh, let's jump in and see what we can get done on them. I was originally thinking I would build just some basic front of the mill barn doors that you see on pretty much every barn. But then what usually happens to me when I'm designing is my imagination gets the better of me and I start thinking of all the different things I could do with them. If I wanted to spend a little extra time building something I was really proud of. I tried a couple different variations. I really like the X design you usually find on barn doors and I was thinking I would try to incorporate this into my final design somehow. But I still hadn't came up with anything I loved, so I thought I would look for inspiration elsewhere. I went to the kitchen to make a sandwich for lunch and saw the fridge doors. Nope, not gonna work. Looked outside and saw my pickup parked in the driveway. That was even worse. Well, that didn't work. Back to the original X design. I decided it really needed some windows. This first attempt just looked goofy, but when I filled the whole upper part of the door in with glass, it looked a little better. But I started to get concerned these looked just a little bit too much like the smaller man doors. I wanted to have some similar elements that tie them together, but I didn't want just enlarged copies. Another thing I realized that might help balance them with each other a little better is if the window height matches the top of the man doors. So I moved this line up and it started really fitting together a lot better. By this point, I was getting pretty happy with the design and about to call it good when I tried this slight variation that really clicked with me. I lost my X pattern that I really liked from the beginning, but I think the vertical boards tied the upper and the lower half of the door together. And I think it gave the doors a slight modern look, which I really liked. I decided this was the design I wanted to go with and fleshed it out with materials. It's gonna have a metal frame with wood, tin, and glass on the inside. I really like the tin contrasting against the wood, and I think the glass will let some good light in from above. Designing is always the hard part for me, and once I get a design that I'm finally happy with, I get really excited and a ton of energy, and I just wanna jump right in. I put some work into figuring out a game plan to build these doors. I'm going to start by carefully positioning all the glass in place using a lot of duct tape. I'm going to hang the handles using some rope and then using some old bricks as spacers I'm going to position the boards in place. Might have to use a little more duct tape. Attach the tin and now that everything's in place I can carefully piece by piece weld the metal frame around and through everything tying it all together and finishing the project. Actually this doesn't make any sense at all. Let's just build the frame first and get it mounted and then fill it in from there. All right, let's head to the shop. I'm using one inch by three inch rectangular tubing for the outside of the frame. I wanted to use metal that was wide enough for the wood and the tin and the glass to all fit recessed in the middle of the door. And three inches is what I decided I needed. After cutting all the pieces, I moved my table to the center of the shop. I was going to need a lot of room to put these doors together. The problem I was having was that the doors are both wider and taller than my welding table. And I really didn't want to build the doors on the floor. The concrete's uneven and it would just be a pain bending over the whole time. So I grabbed a couple full pieces of heavy tubing off the metal rack and clamp them down to my table to work as a base for the doors to be built on. I wanted to use my corner jigs for welding all four sides of the frame together. To make it easier, I slid the door down so I could set the top piece on top of the support while I got the jigs in place and everything clamped down. Then I slid it to the other end using the hoist to help hold it so I could attach the bottom piece of the frame in the same fashion. But then when I slid the door back to the middle, the jig handle caught the table extension and 
I just about broke my foot. <laughs> but luckily my cat-like reflexes kicked in. I was able to jump out of the way. That would have really hurt. I looked it up. That piece of metal is 130 pounds, and uh, that would not have felt good coming down on my foot. With this new shot of adrenaline running through my blood, I got to work welding the corners. And then came in with a flat disc on the grinder to smooth them up. Stacy was out on a run and stopped by at the perfect time to help me check the doors for Square. Which worked out great because I really didn't know how I was going to measure the diagonals on my own. This is my computer monitor. Uh -huh. I just that. You do that a lot? Computer monitor? I just learned that yesterday. It was just a little bit off. So I grabbed a couple tie down straps to pull two of the corners together. And then after checking it again and being happy with it, I clamped it down to the table extensions. I thought that it might retain the shape it's in now clamped in place after welding in the rest of the pieces in the middle. Thank you. And then I got to work welding. I had a lot of it ahead of me. On these inner window frames, I decided to use two inch wide tubing so it would be recessed inside the outer frame. And so I found some half inch square bar to space the tubing in the center of the door. I clamped it down and welded it in place. After doing the same for the other pieces and getting them all tacked into place, I came back in and welded them solid. There's a lot of climbing up, over, around, through, in, underneath, and on top of these doors while I was welding. Once I got the first door welded up and the frame was finished, I slid it off the table so I could start in on the second one. These things were starting to get heavy. I'm gonna call it a night there. Pretty happy with my progress today. I got both uh, door frames done. So, yeah, big step towards getting these things done. The next day I started cutting the one inch strips I bought that I was gonna use as the trim pieces for the windows. I had 48 of them to measure, cut, and deburr on the grinder, which brings up the age old question of how you make a boring, repetitive task on video seem interesting. The only thing I've found that sometimes works is to just edit the hell out of it. The bandsaw leaves a little bit of a burr and I want the glass sitting up tight against these trim pieces, which is why I need to grind them smooth on the grinder. I also need to round the corners on two of the pieces so it'll fit between the welded corners of the frame. Glad to have that done. That was about an hour of cutting and grinding. Using some spacers again, I clamped the trim pieces in the center of the frame and then got them tacked. I'm just gonna weld the outside of the trim pieces 
can leave the inside clean so the glass can sit up against it. This is definitely not going to be a completely waterproof means of installing the glass, but this should be under cover and protected from the rain. So, and it's just for a barn too, so not a huge deal, I don't think. After getting all the trim pieces tacked in place, I lowered the door down to the floor in a vertical position before welding these pieces solid. This is a lot easier welding position for me. And this is a lot of welding. So I thought I'd make it as easy on myself as possible. All right, both door frames are done.